Коллеги, начинаем. Близ заклады наша конференция подходит уже. So, colleagues, let us uh, move to the lightning talk. So, we will have... I would like to ask the speakers to uh, come to the stage and be ready to take over. Uh, each will speak for five minutes. If the uh, speaker speaks for more than five minutes, you can start applauding uh, to make him uh, give the floor to the next one. So each one will speak for five minutes. Eldar, your slides are here. Alexei Ignatov is getting ready. So the first uh, uh, speaker is Eldar Musin. Welcome. I'm Eldar Musin. I work uh, for Adjust Company. I will talk about an experimental project, project we are developing called uh, Parquet for Foreign Data Wrapper. A few words about Parquet, what it is, what format it has. It is column storage, broken into groups of lines. Each uh, row group contains several columns. Each column is broken into chunks, pages, etc. Each column has statistics, minimal, maximum uh, values, number of zeros, and so on. Why are we interested in Parquet? In my company, we have several projects, and one of them is uh, analytics. Uh, we have huge spreadsheets with dozens of uh, columns. We usually two, three, or four. And in this situation, Postgres will read the full data set. Parquet helps us uh, read certain columns and, uh, mi and miss the rest of the file. The availability of minimum maximum statistics helps us filtrate, filter uh, row groups. We can uh, skip uh, huge parts of the file. One row group may be uh, several uh, dozens of megabytes. It's a useful feature for us. Uh, one of the most important things is compression. Parquet supports a great number of different types of compression, encoding, salta delta encoding. Uh, bit packing, dictionary encoding, and the most popular one is the compression algorithm. What is libparquet? It is foreign data a wrapper for Postgres uh, based on libarrow uh, library and libparquet library. Parquet uh, FDV can analyze uh, predications of the query and filter row groups that are not uh, needed in this query. Parquet FDV can analyze the target list and query conditions to retrieve the necessary columns and attributes and uh, request only the necessary columns from the file. Uh, one of the options we can have as we develop a spreadsheet is sorted. For our workload, uh, it is important because uh, our files are sorted by one or two columns. Therefore, uh, it is important to have order bytes, merge joins, or group aggregates uh, without uh, re do repeating, uh, repeated sorting. Postgres knows that this table has been sorted and uh, it won't uh, repeat uh, long uh, operations. This is what it looks like. We provide a name of the parquet file. The rest is uh, the same as with foreign data wrappers. 
we are uh, in active development of the solution and many things have not been optimized yet but if anyone wants to join testing or anyone has requests please join us join us at our repository uh, write about the issues and thank you we have one and a half minutes for questions Yes, we have one question. Why to develop this extension and not use ClickHouse? ClickHouse uh, is also considered, but for another system. Uh, a lot is related to Postgres, and it is uh, better for us to have it there. Thank you, Eldar. Alexei Ignatov. Dibejo. Alexei, are you here? Where is Alexei? Well, it looks like he's not here. Maybe he will join us later. Alvara will speak a about one uh, warm island in the ocean. So, uh, I'm going to be very, very brief. Sorry for not speaking very much. Uh, they say that a picture is worth more than a uh, thousand words, so a video should be more than 24,000 words. After years of hard work and posthumous events around the world, visiting so many cities, building our great Postgres community, Sloney deserves a new Postgres Guild conference on a unique location, Ibiza. <laughs> One and a half minutes for questions to Alvara. <laughs> How much? How much? Yeah, that was nice. So, tickets are not on sale yet. Call for papers is not open yet, but will be in a few days. Sponsors call will be also open in a few days. For web, go to the website, pgibz.io. And especially follow us on Twitter, uh, pg underscore ibz, and to be alert of all the news. And I really wait you there. It is a great location in summer, perfect weather, perfect food, the beach. What else can I say, right? <laughs> let us know if you have, let me know if you have any, any question. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Alvaro. We have Alexei Ignatov with De Belgium, whatever it is pronounced. I have five minutes. I will speak about the Bezium. It's an up-to-date, a constant data changer. We take some changes from Postgres and throw it into another database. And this other database uh, is Tavka, from where we can uh, read data of consumers and um, analyze it. So it's a fashionable CDC, as I said. So I will briefly speak about what it is and what it is based on. The last century was based on triggers. Uh, we took tables, created triggers, and through PGQ or Saloni, we sent it elsewhere, store elsewhere and analyze. We used various ETLs, Wapintake, etc. Or we did some dumps, uh, then uh, upload them, and in some database in Postgres, for instance, we analyze them. What is the present? What do we have today? Today we have Debezium based on Kafka Connect instrument based on uh, uh, written on Java. For those who love this language, they use Postgres logical decoding which has been in place for five years already, with version 9.4, a fail-safe solution uh, out of the box. Uh, we can have a fail-safe cluster, create three hosts, and go ahead with it. All the data coming from the database, we analyze not in RDBMS, in Hadoop or, some, or elsewhere. There is another fashionable thing in Debezium. Uh, you can uh, put it in Kubernet. Who did it? Red Hat, open code, compatible with, compatible with Kafka Connect. We can use uh, Kafka Connect and use it in Debezium. can be uh, downloaded in Kafka and many other flows uh, for further analysis. Debezium is based on logical decoding we use it to uh, uh, unload from Postgres logical replication slot, use uh, login for logical decoding, well to JSON. There is another login, uh, protoboo for something, I don't remember. But to control and manage all this, we use RSTP and through the command uh, line we install it. What's important? As, as we do the settings, when we have a long transaction, you will uh, have to use a plugin name, val to json streaming, uh, for the long transaction to be broken into small uh, uh, line by line uh, things to be uh, downloaded into Kafka. Heartbeat interval. Uh, it says five seconds here, so every five seconds this connector will check changes, track changes in the Postgres. If there are none, it will compress the replication slot and keep it small to avoid peak loads for fail safety in Kafka for topics configured containing configuration status and shifts in the slots. We need to have the rep factor of three issues well, uh, very specific for open source. When we expect something that's going to work, it doesn't work. Uh, you can track it as you parse logos. If you don't parse logos and do not reinstall containers or this connector, the rep slot will grow uh, big and Postgres will fail. So, thank you. That's it. One question is allowed. Fyodor, have you got? Oh, please give this gentleman the microphone. Uh, 
DNS resolver from Google. Do you do it on purpose? Yes, DMS works and connected doesn't. So uh, there is no mistake here. I have a comment, CDC, LTL, it is uh, deciphered differently. Debezium is good when you use one database. Uh, it's a, a communal Postgres cluster. It may fail. There are at least two uh, or three open issues in Debezium because it's not stable yet. Probably in 010 version, this bug will be eradicated. Yeah, we, we checked it out and decided to develop uh, our own in-house. Thank you. Yvonne, please welcome. Good evening. I have just added my topic. I won't have any slides, but I speak very fast. Uh, do we have developers? Please raise your hands. And who use Java? Who knows what Mobitis is? Who hates URM? Good. Let me tell you a case which I mentioned in my talk. Uh, we friended my bodies for Java with Jason B with columns in Postgres. Uh, there is an issue We usually use OP. We have objects, properties, and uh, inheriting. We expand our basic objects and do something with them. How to uh, put it to the relational database? It's an interesting question. Uh, how to friend uh, uh, Postgres with um, uh, SQL-oriented languages? Does anyone know how to do it? No. We looked at JSON B and thought, why not? We took Jackson, used in Spring by standard, and created a basic object. I'm responsible for monitoring, so our object uh, has latitude and longitude, certain properties which are necessary. Uh, they're uh, located in the basic abstract object. It is possible to inherit a car, uh, a human, uh, some special equipment with specific margins. If we uh, used standard approach, we would have a lot of columns where columns from the basic objects are filled with data and the other columns are uh, half full or one third full, which is not good. We can use join tables which complement those margins as basic entities. And when we see a field and a margin, and we have uh, its characteristics in the column. JSON B is there, and several years ago we asked, and we we were afraid to say we use JSON B. Today we are proud of doing it. It's a great thing. Let's do more with that. And we had a great master class with uh, JSON B. The speakers were great. With Jackson and uh, Java attributes the so-called annotation, we can create a, a property uh, which can be read by the... and it will be clear that this property should be found in JSON B column. Or the name can be indicated in the same annotation. When we retrieve the object from the base, it seamlessly uh, uh, lies on the, on the basic object. If we have basic margins, so the margins from the inherited objects uh, also fit into uh, regular margins, massives, or uh, arrays, or properties. When we open the database, you will see one JSON B table uh, in the text file uh, with descriptions of margins. So you can avoid a redundancy because uh, margins with standard values can be ignored, can be neglected. Uh, the columns are not swollen. 
and we could use this model with the sophisticated hierarchy, put it in one table, easily read, quickly operated, and I think we created a, a smart solution. Has anyone done um, anything similar? Well, it's cool. At GitHub, I will try to upload the proof of concept, but indeed, it's a great solution. Please have a look at it. If you think you can use it, Jason, Google may, may know how to do it. Try to, to do it in your own languages that you use. Thank you. Question, one question. Well, it, it was hard to understand it without slides, but I, I think it's cool. Well, uh, I like when you said you, we can uh, ignore columns with uh, nulls. We can neglect them. Who comes next? Fine, Mathieu. Next, we have Mikhail Turing with his dirty memory. So I will unveil a small secret. Okay, I have five minutes only. So, dirty memory. Uh, who doesn't know what it's all about? Who heard about this? Anyone who is not willing to answer any questions? So, my people tried their best because there was another Postgres conference before this one and we wrote this diagram. I almost agree with that. The thing is, Postgres doesn't know anything about disks at all. And that's why we need to understand if we want to do something with optimization of I.O. Because Postgres writes everything on on in, mem on in memory, and then it goes to disk somehow. It's a very important remark. And when I started to think about it, I started to read what is going on there. I understood. I realized that in Linux Postgres. There is another database that actually manages cache, write operations, keys, and so on and so forth. So the conclusion is as follows. So dirty can be defined like this. You can launch this command and you will see how much dirty parameter you have. This is one of the main charts that I've been using in my operations and it shows you that data is less uh, than 4 gigs. And what is 4 gigs? 4 gigs is, it is say, uh, it is BBU IO rate controller size. We have 100% of write. You have folks in Linux how to set data. But the goal is, if we keep dirty uh, with the SSD cache size, you will have, you won't have any problems with the database. So this is my little secret, and this is how we make databases. Great, great. Thank you. Two, two and a half minutes to answer questions. So while writes to to buffer to well, what about data protection? Then it f syncs at f sync. Uh, magic happens. 
and uh, then data go from OS buffers to disks and the rest it has things later on when when checkpoint comes and the overall problem of Postgres that checkpoint gives you spikes in order to avoid them you need to have this you have to keep dirty uh, with the cache size and before that the made shared buffers very small because if, if shared buffers are small Postgres cannot uh, describe a lot of things and it will not spike any more questions? Thank you, Mikhail, very much. Okay, now we won't have any problems with the databases. So, it looks like we uh, need to combine good things with pleasant things. And the next uh, speaker is Julianda, who will be talking about... Um, opportunity. Um, I'll, I'll introduce my name is Julian Standang from Indonesia, and um, this is Tatsuro. Uh, Hi, Tatsuro <laughs> Stubichi. I'm Tatsuro Yamada from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I'm a member of PGConf Asia. Uh, <clears throat> we held the PGConf Asia uh, three times from 2016 in Tokyo, Japan. So we consider that, it, uh, that it, it's time to move the conference to other country uh, because the conference name is PGConf Asia. So um, for the next year, it, it is uh, this year, we will have also PG conference in, in, in Abyss, eventually the second one after Alvaro. Then uh, we are welcome you, all of you to come to Bali Indonesia, and uh, we might have uh, the same thing, the same environment, the same sense with the beats, and uh, we have maybe a, a little bit different with uh, Ibiza. We have, uh, you know, uh, Hindu Bali and uh, mountain. It's a different cultural. Yeah, um, it, we are opening for uh, CFP maybe uh, uh, this month, and uh, for the sponsor, etc. We will have about maybe uh, three or four days. And uh, this secret, uh, actually this is uh, not only the conference, it is also a uh, gateway, holiday. So, because in Bali we have uh, a jargon, uh, every day is holiday. So, and then um, we will also uh, have a different kind of uh, Postgres conference. We don't want to be too, uh, you know, boring and too technical things. Maybe we will have more in business thing and feature. And we will talk, we won't talk about technical, deep technical, we will talk about how this Postgres can be our solution in business or maybe in other sectors. Thank you very much. Uh, I welcome you to come to Bali this year in September 2019. Thank you, Julian Tatsura. Maybe questions for them? <laughs> One question. Thank you very much. Do you plan to organize chartered flight to Moscow? Yes, sure. Why not? If there are some people from Moscow, not only the flight, but also the translators. Why not? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Hey, thank you. Uh, ну, надо сказать, что конференции будут проходить не только в таких местах, как Бали. В этом году запланировано пожекон. Well, I would like to say that uh, PG conferences will take place not only in places like Bali, but in other places too. PGConf will take place in Nizhny Novgorod. It will be in June, if I'm not mistaken. PGConf Siberia will take place in Siberia, in Krasnoyarsk. And a tour to Stolby will be arranged there for those who are interested in it. It's a very decent place uh, to visit. And as I'm opening uh, the next presentation, tell something about Stolby. 
Yeah, we need to... Well, Stolby is a very unique place, especially when it's minus 28 outside and we made um, a trip with Bruce and you maybe remember uh, Bruce after this uh, tour to Stolby. It's very good, very nice. But he said that he likes Stolby. But he was afraid that he would get some hawker virus in Russia. Okay, our next speaker, Mr. Smovalov. Okay, I don't have any slides to show since I signed up very late. Just want to tell you that today we were talking about manipulations with databases. And I have would like to tell you about Postgres Checkup, a brand new tool. The idea is monitoring is good, but it doesn't give you enough depth. So if you have control over your monitoring, that's good, you can develop it as much as possible. But if you have a zoo of different databases, or if you come to a new position, or you would just like to know what, what's happening with your databases, Postgres Checkup is the right tool to do it. We have planned uh, to have more than 50 checks, and if you, this is just a screenshot. If you go to to our GitLab page, I will show you the link, and here you can see the list of all these checks. They are um, divided into several groups, and you will learn what we are trying to check, like replication, monitoring, and so on and so forth. It will tell you more information about the benefits. Uh, we can check after vacuum. Um, we can check problems with concurrency. So we can uh, check estimation bloat. Also, it is very important to note that this tool uh, doesn't is not about uh, any uh, long or heavy query. It's about very light checks. So sometimes it can make mistakes, but still it will give you some idea about what is going on with your bloat. Also, we have different uh, memory uh, settings, uh, indexes, valid, invalid indexes, indexes, uh, some indexes can be easily dropped, and uh, we analyze all nodes. So we will see that uh, something is not used on most and we can drop it elsewhere. And finally, we can take a look at object sizes, what types are used, and so on and so forth. And also there is PG start statements analysis. I tell, told you how we analyze metrics, how we analyze second to second. So this is the... It's all about this, but you have to run it two times to have two snapshots. And an example how this can be applied um, in real life. Okay, let me zoom in. So we generate JSON report. So you can export it from the history and pass it somehow. But out of J JSON we generate MD. And they can be used anywhere. In GitLab, in GitHub or elsewhere. Or you can convert it into HTML or PDF files. And you can see how it works. Well, this thing isn't ready now, but you can see what we are analyzing. Sometimes you can compare different things. In fact, big companies have zero problems. And you see that you can see the versions that are different or resources that are different. So monitoring is all about dashboard. But this is like a technical, uh, a technical check of your vehicle that you usually make every six months. It's like a comprehensive health check. Yeah, 
you see how it looks like, but still we are improving this uh, so you could have a decent solution. It's completely open source. Give it a try. Maybe you will find something interesting for you. Even if you don't use it, maybe you will get some ideas out of this tool. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Duration. If you launch it from your laptop, you have remote SSH, so you don't have to install anything on the node because you go to a company and it is very difficult to change anything in a company. It takes up to several months. You can, well, it takes up to 60 seconds to collect something. 15 seconds if the node is uh, very close. A very speedy thing. And for GitLab, six nodes. 150 pages and it's for experts our next step is to to is to extract knowledges and to make some to make some insights well looks like it's a very handy thing maybe I will give it a try thank you Nikolai and thanks to all flash speakers